right. Man, God is so good. He's doing so many great things in people's lives. Now, the word I want to share with you is going to be a few things. One, it's going to, ed- it's going to be like uh, the Lord is educating his people right now. Now, if you're not absolutely 100% in love with the Word of God, this is what you pray. God, let me fall in love with the Word. Let me love reading the Word of God. Let me want to devour the Word of God. Lord, I pray that I have a passion to pray. When you start praying these things, you're going to start having a new outlook. Like reading the Bible is not a religious duty. It is an adventure to live. And so understanding that but today it's going to encourage you greatly and it's going to be very informational but also it's going to challenge you okay Um, if you don't leave challenged we're not doing what we're supposed to do because the Holy Spirit convicts and he comforts he's he's good just like that okay so the prophetic word I got this week that was really unique from the Lord was it was kind of odd I thought shaking versus blessing and I said well they're both good And then the Lord just started showing me that most people miss this because they always pray for God to bless them, but they never pray for God to shake them. Okay, who who wants to be shaken? Nobody. Who who wants to live in comfort world? Most people. Not my people. But I want to be in the place that God can shake me. He can break me out of a comfort zone. If I'm in a comfort zone, I feel scared. I feel weird because I want to be moving in everything, in life, in ministry, in business. I want to be on the forefront of what God is doing. Amen. So we always ask God to bless us and say, God, bless what I'm doing. Bless this work. Bless, 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 bless. But people don't ever want to get to the foundation, okay? They don't, when you say, if you're struggling in your marriage, God, shake us to our foundation. If you're struggling in your walk with God, shake me down to my foundation. Lord, if you have a business, my business isn't working, shake me back down to the very basics of it. Okay, well, what's the basics of the Word of God? Relationship with the Lord, praying and reading. It's really simple. And so, um, oh, fasting. Most people don't like that word. But, but you get into this shaking then and only then the blessing will live because every if, it, if you're blessed and you're not shaken, it was like weeds choking out something in the garden. Tracking with me? Okay, so we'll start off in Hebrews 12, 27, and 29. Now this phrase, once and for all, clearly indicates the final removal of things that are shaking. Last week, I was talking about Patricia King had the word about broke through versus breakthrough because she said that her and her husband prayed for something and said, God, I want to break through once and for all. That means they broke through and they'll never go back. These Egyptians you see today, you will see no more. And, you know, I think Autumn was sharing this in the transition, uh, just just about you're just you're going to be free from it. The word God gave me for this year is freedom and deliverance. You're going to be so free. And I'm going to be honest with you. The first 90 days of this year is going to be a shaking, okay? And so if if your life is kind of shaking right now, don't worry. You're in good company, okay? And I'm just, this is so from the Lord. If your life is being shaken, you don't have clarity right now, you're okay, all right? Have you ever been on a crazy wild roller coaster and felt stable? Especially not at the fair, okay? But you're okay. You're okay. And so it's going with this word. It says, removal of all things shaken, that is the old order, so what is unshakable will remain. Since we are receiving our rights to an unshakable kingdom, hang on, start right there. We have our rights, but we are constantly receiving our rights. What is those rights? Knowledge. I remember uh, one one time in my life, I was kind of trying to figure out this this business deal. And this older gentleman came up and said, oh, Joe, I'll tell you what. If you do this and this, this will take care of all of it. I said, no one's ever taught me that before. He said, that's right. But I just did. Knowledge changed my whole situation in the business deal. When you receive a kingdom right or revelation... It changes the way that you think. Like I remember I heard two guys arguing one time about should you tithe 
Yes, you should. Well, I shouldn't. Well, where's in the Bible? New Testament, Old Testament. Do you, they asked me, do I tithe? I said, Lord, no, I'm not limiting God to 10%. Are you kidding me? Why would I only give 10% to God? They looked at me. I said, tithe and offering. Read the word. Okay? And so when you receive a revelation, um, like when I really, I think I rededicated my life. It's like the seventh time. And uh, I really got in there this time. And because I got around people who I could run with, Okay, some people say, you want to have a walk with the Lord? I'm like, no, I need some wild folks who can run. I'm ready to go. And so I remember I was just in there with these people just, just and they would talk about, you know, when you're going through a hard situation, ask the Lord to give you comfort and peace through it. And then I got with some Pentecostals and they were bilingual. I didn't know you could be, get bilingual in church. I thought you had to go to school to get bilingual. And so they're in there, and they're like, oh, no, you don't have to go through that. You can pray for breakthrough. I said, what's a breakthrough? And, uh, and then they said, oh, you can pray in the Spirit. I said, Spirit? And they started telling all this. I had no idea what these crazy folks were talking about. But then all of a sudden, I started receiving revelation from the Lord, and it changed everything about the way that I lived. Okay, so... Since we are receiving our rights to an unshakable kingdom, have you ever noticed that in the world, the kingdoms of this world are all shakable, but his is not? Yeah, I'll take his kingdom, okay? And because I don't, I don't like just being a part of the unshakable, man, and there's so much shaking going on and nothing stable in our world, it seems at times, but his word is unshakable, and if you're in his word, you're going to be fine. I don't care what you're going through, you will be fine. And it says, unshakable will remain, since we are receiving our rights to this unshakable kingdom. We should be extremely thankful and offer God the purest worship and delights his heart as we lay down our lives in absolute surrender. Not just surrender, absolute surrender, filled with awe. For our God is holy in a devouring fire. He will devour everything in your life that is not of him if you will completely lay it down. There is a life that you can live that you can only dream about. Now remember this. The Bible says that the earth and the heavens will be shaken, but the things of the kingdom of God will never be shaken. When you get a word from God, I don't care how much shaking is going on, you'll be able to hang on to it. You'll get through anything. You'll get through any attack, any situation, any financial problem, any, any physical issue. You're going to be fine. So people, remember this. Please, please, please remember this. Before you ask God to bless you, always ask for him to shake you. And nobody said amen, but I'm right. Y'all were in so awe of God right then, you couldn't even speak. But I'm telling you, and because... I've learned this, that I would say, God bless me, God bless me in this, bless me in this. And there was times that God would bless him. For some reason, there was a crack or a crevice, and that blessing just gone. And I'm like, what happened? And the Lord spoke to me and said, when a foundation is cracked, you can't build on it. I mean, and you got to allow God to shake you to be pure-hearted, okay? Now, I'm going to read you a little bit of a prophetic word that Nate Johnson had, okay? He said, I heard the Lord say, you are not in the storm. Don't have to raise your hand, but how many people feel like over the last few weeks you've been in a storm, a pretty bad trial, tribulation, okay? He said, you are in a birthing canal. <laughs> Think about that. You're not in a storm. You're in a birthing canal, okay? Now, we've all been in one at least, you know, just once in our life. But, you know, it's, we think sometimes storms are bad. But most storms bring rain. They bring life. And so what do you say? Now, if y'all ain't country, I apologize for your upbringing. But we were out there, and it was storming. And, and Dad would always say, hey, boy, that was my name until I was 32. Get to cover. Get in the shelter. And it may be a barn or something. Those things get blown away in a East Texas tornado, you know. But, hey, safest place you could be. But he would always say, take shelter. What does the word say about shelter in a storm? Okay. Some of you are in a birth canal right now with the Lord. He is birthing something in you. It may feel painful. It may not be the easiest. In a, in a birth canal, you are squeezed. You're about to come out. And when you do, whatever God has had you hidden. Some of you have been hidden for nine months. 
for a long time, nine years. God is about to do what he needs to do in you. And this is what I felt in the spirit. First 90 days of this year, there's going to be a shaking. But get ready for the other nine months. I'm telling you, it's coming, all right? So he went on to say that, that a dark cloud had descended over me in, in this, this dream. I'll go back. He said, I went into this vision where I saw a storm beginning to brew around me. A dark cloud was ascending over me and all around me was, was just winds and the storm came closer. As the hail began to rain down, my spirit began to feel anguish, fear, and intimidation. Does anybody feel anguish, fear, and intimidation right now? He said, in this vision, I, be, I cried out to the Lord. What kind of storm are we stepping into into 2023? He said, I heard the Lord speak almost audibly, and he said this. There, there is a storm coming in 2023, but the storm is coming to set things right. The storm will bring balance and order, and it will destroy the bonds of wickedness. What are bonds? Things that hold people captive and hold them back. It says, and then he said something very chilling and sobering. My church needs to know that the storm is actually a birth canal. For the storm that is coming is a righteous storm of justice that is going to clear the atmosphere of the enemy's plans and agenda. Now, there's a lot more to it, but that's all I'm going to share. I'm telling you, we are on the verge of something very, very powerful. You as an individual, you are going to have 90 days of shaking, getting with the Lord. That's why we're doing this prayer. Um, we have eight prayer meetings a week here because I want everybody in position. I really believe that every one of us is going to step into the best time of their life. Another thing I just kind of felt in my spirit was repositioning from the Lord. Second Chronicles 2017. It said, you will not need to fight in this battle. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How many times have I, some of you, how many times have we ever fought ourselves in a spiritual battle? You are tired, you are weary, you are worn out. But the Lord is saying, in this time, you are to position yourself. How do we fight in the spirit? You're not going to have to. Now, what happens? Let's go back to Nate Johnson's. Word. I hope you, this is going to set some people free today. Some of you are, have been in anguish, fear, and intimidation from the enemy. This, this battle, you position yourself in prayer. You position yourself in the word. Why? In prayer, in the word, you become a part of the unshakable kingdom and the revelation is placed inside of you. Man, I remember there was a time in my life when I needed some advice, so I went to the three wisest people I know. And at the midst of them starting to talk, Holy Spirit said, they're going to give you good advice. Do you, want, do you want a good life? He said, but if you will seek me and fast, I will show you and you will get a God word and you can have a God life. Huge difference. You just drop an O, okay? You know what the O stands for? <laughs> Your opinion. All right, I just made that up. But the thing about it is, is we're about to step into this. So, in this word, 2 Chronicles 20, 17, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. Listen, your friends may leave you, some family may leave you, but he will always be there with you, okay? He will stand with you through anything. Then he says, do not fear or be dismayed. Wait a minute. How in the world are you not supposed to fear when you're in the midst of a battle? That's the craziest thing I ever heard, unless you're part of an unshakable kingdom. Then there is no fear. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow you will go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And if you know the whole story, all he did was stand there, and three complete armies destroyed themselves while he just sat there, and he was blessed because of it. Okay? Repositioning, 2 Timoth uh, Thessalonians 3 and 3. But the Lord Yahweh is always faithful to place you on a firm foundation and guard you from the evil one. He's always going to guard you, okay? When, when, when fear and intimidation comes your way, you're okay because he is guarding you. Proverbs 23, 7. We're about to make a shift in this message, okay? For as a person thinks in his heart, so is he. Your heart, as I say all the time, is your spirit, your mind, and your emotion. What you think is so important. For 
Another translation says, for as a person thinks within himself, so is he. So when you go into a battle in 2023, what do you see the outcome being? Exactly what he said. And it, if, if it makes sense, it's not of God probably. It never makes sense. It never happens the way that you think it's going to happen. But it always works out better. Because we come up with natural solutions. He comes up with an unshakable kingdom solution. Which always comes through. I remember one time this, this person, uh, they're going to call me every month on the 27th or the 28th. Pray that I get a financial breakthrough and I get 500 more dollars. So I can pay my bills at the end of every month, every month, every month. And, and I said, you, it's your mindset that is broken. God wants to give you an idea or an overtime or something to get the 500, then maybe an additional 500 to give to somebody else until they get a breakthrough. It's all about the way that you think. Proverbs 4.23. So above all, guard the affections of your heart. See, a lot of times we don't guard our heart. So many times, so many times people will give out the affections of their heart to people who are going to misuse them, hurt them, manipulate them. When God is saying, guard your heart in certain situations, Th then there's a situations that you need to, to have the affection of your heart given to the Lord. Now, I've, I've learned this. I, you know, the Bible says two times in Proverbs, there's safety in the multitude of counselors, and that's good. But they should never give you the advice to lead you. They should only confirm what the Holy Spirit has said to you. He is the God in life. Okay? And so, back to that scripture, it says, Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellsprings of life. When you take care and you guard your heart, your life's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. When you're not fine is when your heart is damaged, okay? Uh, Chuck Swindoll used to always say, I'm convinced of life. It's 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it, okay? Anybody ever reacted wrong? Well, that was a loud laugh, Mr. Ken. <laughs> You know, I, and I used to, I, when I read that one day, I said, I started thinking of the biggest problems I've ever had in my life. And it wasn't what I did stupid when I was younger. <laughs> it's how I reacted to it. Or when someone said something to me, I could have let it just roll off my back. But the way I reacted, and the way I reacted was worse than what they said to me. And so when you hear something like that, learn how to apply it to your life. Where we're going in 2023, I'm going to tell you something. You can read, pray, and fast, and that is good. That is phenomenal. If you do not change your mindset, it's not going to help you a whole lot. So if I sat there and I had a gallon of water and David said, hey, man, I'm, I'm thirsty, and I said, okay, I'm about to pour out this water, and he didn't put any cups or vases or anything, I just poured it out, it'd be wasted. But it was available. You know, God is about to pour out this year. But unless you expand your mindset with God and understand the revelation of the kingdom that's coming, you're not going to be able to receive anything. You know, and, and the more that you receive from the Lord, you're going to find out the things that you prayed for in the past. He will give you the mindset to steward them because you may not be able to steward what you're praying for. And why would he give you what you're praying for if it was going to destroy you? Okay. I got it. I got it. All right. So every day when I go to God, I'm like, Lord, I need help. I, I need to know more. I need this revelation. So Proverbs 4 and 25 says, set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead, ignore life's distractions. Pretty simple right there. You keep gazing upon the Lord with the fixed purpose of what he's, what he's called you to, not your will, but he's called you to. Look straight ahead. You got it. Proverbs 16 and 3, before you do anything, put your trust totally in God and not in yourself. Okay? Put your trust totally in God. What does that mean? Mindset has to shift. Why? We try to figure everything out. Have any of you ever had a night that you can't sleep because your mind is racing? I used to have those all the time. 
And then one day the Lord spoke so just kind and calm and just said, I got this. I've got this. Okay? And I said, I don't know what to do, how to handle everything you're giving me. And the Lord said, I'll bring people in to help you. Don't worry about it. I'll have the finances. Don't worry about it. I'll bring in the people. You pray and position yourself, and I'm going to pour into you. And when I realized that, everything changed in my life. You don't have to figure it out. God's got you, and you got a lot of people around you that will support you and help you, okay? Another translation says, commit your work to the Lord, for your thoughts will be established. If you didn't catch that, I preached this two weeks ago. But what I love about it is this. This is, we get this backwards. I got to get everything figured out in my mind before I start. The word says, commit it to God, start it, and I'll figure out the details. If you don't like details, oh yeah, you in with this with me. I'm just like, no, let's just go. Like, I'm a, somebody has a great idea or something. I'm like, let's just do it. And I, I'm just like, I'll figure it out along the way. Let's just go. Man, when I was young, I was the ride or die guy. I was sitting there one night. We're in a youth service at Assembly of God. And we're sitting there. My friend said, hey, you going to go to Brownsville for four days? I'm like, yeah. I ain't thought about nothing. So I go ask my, my, my pastor. I said, hey, I got any vacation days? He said, yeah, you get a day a week off, and, and you get like a week vacation. I said, okay. All right, well, I'm going to take my day off on Thursday, and I want five Fridays in a row. I'm just going to drive to Brownsville every week for revival. I didn't think about nothing. I just went for it. It worked. I loved it. It was good. I mean, now, don't try this at home. But there's a lot of times you need to think stuff out. That's why my wife and I really, well, she balances me out. She's got it together. But you need some folks around you that will push you out. And then some folks, you need some, if you're not administrative, you need some administrative folks around you. But it just, you get around the right people, you'll all use your gifts. Life is fun. I got off a little bit. Okay, here we go back to what I was saying. So commit your work to the Lord. Then everything will be established. This scripture gives me life. Because like, when, hey, let's just sit down and get it planned out. Cool. Okay, let's just do it. Let's just go. Have y'all ever done that stuff? Or is just like, let's just go do something. Just, okay. Uh, it's just kind of a, a mindset. Like, you ever been, like, I love going to, like, like a just, sometimes I come into prayer. What do you want to do, God? Do you want me to pray or, 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 or just listen or, or listen to worship music or what? just whatever you want to do? I just want to commit it to you. And just so when you commit things to God, like one day we had a conference. We had a, our friend Jeremiah Johnson in, and right, right when he left, we went to eat with Jeff and Michelle. And Autumn went to wash her hands, and she came out. She just said, I'm quitting my job. Real loud, and everybody heard her. And we're like, okay, she's quitting her job. I said, what's the plan? She, I don't know. I just felt the Lord say, quit your job. We're going to move forward. I'm like, okay. We'll figure it out. Let's figure it out. Man, it's just, okay, this is for somebody. You, you're going to have to understand this. Okay, here, let's go on. Your life is only as good as your kingdom mindset. Because your mind will hurt if you try to figure it out. Where your thoughts lead, your life will follow. you got to keep your mind focused on what's important in life. When you get your mind focused on the right thing, your life will follow. You know, God, family, ministry, business, ironwood, um, have you, seriously, have you ever been sitting around just thinking like, man, I, I'm going to cup of coffee right now. And you, within five seconds, are headed towards the coffee pot. Carrick, 28 seconds, you in. And so where your mind thinks, you, your whole life will follow, okay? It, it just goes. What consumes your mind controls your life. Who do you think about the most? That person has the biggest voice in your life, good or bad. What consumes your mind? If, if you're in the Word all the time, it just, just comes out. If, if you listen 
or you watch a certain show, you'll quote that show a lot. Whatever you think about, it, it, it just comes out of you constantly. Put the right things in. So I, I got a little paragraph wrote down. I wrote this one day. Um, it said, your life is directly tied to the mindset above everything. Your life is directly tied to your mindset about, excuse me, about everything. All of our actions come from our belief patterns in our life. You, see, you know how people think differently? Because they read differently. You tracking with me on this? What kind of books do you read? That's what you're putting in. If you would really understand everything that you watch and everything, like, like one day we're sitting there, Ezra's theology is pretty cool. Like he's like, Power Rangers is a, is a spiritual show. It's about God. When I was like, well, how do you figure? Well, there's five of them. And I said, what do you mean? Well, the five-fold ministry. And he told me which Power Ranger was, I'm like, I'm like, and, and he was probably six or seven. I thought, wait a minute. He's watching the Power Rangers, and five of them, and I was talking about the five-fold. It's the ministry things we were at. And he just put them together. That was what was in his life at the time, you know. And so in life, you, will, you are a combination of what you hear, what you see, and who you're around. And if you really want to be successful, like I was listening to this, this, this guy on this video the other day, and they said, how did you become so successful in life in such a short period of time? He said, it's all I did. He has a business, and he just exploded it. He said, God, family, business, that's all. It, I was is it with our church people, my family, or the business. That's it. That's all I talk about, God, family, business. And he said, I, I didn't have, I really didn't, you know, take vacations. He said, oh, a bunch of them. That's family. And, and it got into his mind, people's mind, that he was so focused. If you focus in on the word of God and you focus in on what he's saying and how people that apply to what he's called you to gather around you, your life will be like crazy. There is a life you can live that you didn't even know was available. In my whole life, I was trying, I was just trying to have fun all the time. I have never had so much joy in my life than I do now. And it's just because I watch what I watch and I guard what I listen to and, and guard who's, who's around me, okay? And let me tell you, every person that wants your attention does not deserve it. Every time your phone rings, you can't give me a scripture and verse that says you got to answer your phone, okay? You can't do that. And so every time somebody says, hey, man, I need, can I have some of your time? Mm, you have to pray about it. I know that sounds kind of crazy to some folks, but you'll, you'll get it later. I remember one time I was at a church, and the women's minister was counseling this lady who had four divorces, and she married the same guy, basically. He just had four different names. Married the, and they were like, every guy you marry is identical. And, and she's like, well, what happens is, and then she went through this little pattern. Autumn was talking about patterns in the transition. And she would go through patterns, but she would have a new husband, a kid by the husband, new husband, kid by the husband. And it just kept, and, and then one day she said, how come no one ever told me that? You know what she said? Because you didn't put yourself around the right people that would love you enough to say stop. You got to put the people around you that they don't care if they hurt your feelings. Apostle Ken, he's hurt my feelings quite a few times, but I needed it. You know, another mentor, Pat Shatson, he's hurt my feelings before, but I needed it. You need people around you that will speak truth into you, okay? So, back to what I was saying. Our life is directly tied to our mindset about everything. All of our actions come from our belief patterns that we have in life. Mind you, the word. If you think positive, you're going to have a good outlook on life. Even in a bad season or through trials and tests, a negative mindset will produce negative thoughts, negative actions, and a lot of negativity. I'm going to tell you something. There is no negativity in the kingdom of God. When you are going through, okay, I got, I got a piece of paper from college, okay? Did not like any of it. Zero. But I would go to class and thinking, man, 
It's part of the process, and I'm going to learn something today. That was the mindset, because I didn't want to go. But you know what? I went. Every time I'm going through a trial, I'm ready to learn what I need to learn. I, hey, I'm, I don't pray for God to deliver me until I learn what I need to learn. I didn't figure you'd respond. But th- that's it. You know, I learned this when, when I, was, I was younger. I was, I was at a conference. I was the youngest person by 20 years, and I was around my heroes in the faith. And I, I was, you know, they had a, a dinner after the first night. I was a little bit nervous, and I was sitting talking to them, just listening to them. And then uh, one of them said, hey, Joe. I probably had this happen five or six times around these older guys. They're like, Joe, you don't talk a lot. I said, oh, I talk all the time. I never stop talking, actually. But I just want to be, be around you guys. And everyone's kind of having fun talking. And I asked one of them, I said, I want to hear some spiritual stuff. Like, teach me something. And they're like, tell me the hardest things you've ever went through. Oh, I told them. I told them two or three things. They kind of laughed. They're like, that's it? I said, yeah. I said, well, what, what about you? Y'all have gone through stuff? They're like, have we gone? Th-? They, they thought I was the funniest guy in the world. They started laughing. I said, you guys are my heroes. Y'all go through hard stuff. They were like, Joe, let me, let me tell you one. They tell me, the one guy said, hey, tell them about that one time. He said, man, half my church left in one Sunday. They were laughing about it. I said, how do you laugh about that? One guy said, man, I've had, the, I've had all this physical affliction, but let me tell you what happened. I learned this, this, and this. Hey, tell them about that one time that happened to you. And they started telling all these stories. They were laughing about things they went through. I thought, these people are strange. But I realized, you ready for this? They, at that time, were part of, of an unshakable kingdom. My theology was in a shakable kingdom because I thought that if I went through a hard time, I could parachute out of that thing. These guys were committed for life. Come hell or high water, I will serve the Lord. I will go. I don't care if everything comes at me. We're going to serve the Lord. Are you tracking with me on this? And the problem with a lot of folks is they pray for an easy, easy, super easy life. Jim Rohn used to always say, don't pray things are better. Pray that you're better. Pray that you are stronger. Listen. The enemy's going to throw everything Hades has at you sometimes. None of it will phase you. What was the Malachi talking about with, with that, that prophetic vision or dream she had? That God will rescue you through everything. I, man, when things come against me, it, are they easy? No. Is he stronger? Yes. The other day, and I wish all of you could, I was praying about something that was weighing me down. And the Holy Spirit showed me a very small, tiny, minute glimpse of the kingdom of God. And it was probably a thousand times bigger than that. what I was going through. You want to go through some hard life? That's your choice. You can go through a time with God. He'll get you through anything. I'm talking anything. And you know, do you know, it's kind of strong this morning, but I love it. It's so why I'm telling you this. Do you know why people are unsuccessful in life? Why people have broken lives? Because they're a part of a shakable kingdom. They're not a part of the unshakable kingdom. That's where nor- normality of church versus the kingdom of God is a difference. I can't tell you how many. I was talking to those generals that one day, and one guy said, Yeah, man, I remember one time. I walked into the doctor, and they said, my wife had this and this and had all this stuff. And we're like, whatever, doc. We walked out. We prayed. It took about six months, but she was healed from it. And I can't tell you how many ministry friends I have have said that the doctor calls them the miracle patients. Because what happened? Did we miss up the x-rays? Did we swap the x-rays? Well, who'd you swap them with? You can't just say you swapped them. Who did you swap them with? They don't have an answer because God Almighty heals. I'm telling you. 
There's no negativity in the kingdom. You get a bad doctor's report, they got to practice. He ain't practicing. He's God, okay? You got to understand, if God told you to start something and it's not working out, don't speak death over it. Speak life over it and believe in that resurrection power and watch it come back. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 it says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself up against the knowledge of God. Bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. When your mind get, gets off base or off center, you get some scripture on it, bring it back in and get your life back in alignment and watch what happens. And I'm going to tell you something. When you're alone, you need to learn to confront your own mindset. I mean, you confront your... I, I talk to myself all the time. I can, why did I think, if someone says something and it makes me mad, I'm not mad at them, I'm mad at me. Why did I get mad? Because, you know, you can't offend a dead man. The Bible says pick up your cross daily and follow after him. If you're constantly getting offended, it, 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 it's you. I, you know, someone pushes your button, thank you for pushing my button because you just exposed something to me that I need to work on. Because when you get mad about something, you'll stop moving forward with God in your own life. But, but, but when, when somebody does something, you're just like, <laughs> bless them. You just keep going about your day, you will be okay. You'll be okay. Confront your own mindsets and, what, and, and say, God, why do I think this way towards you? Why am I? And, and he, will, he will speak to you. He will speak to you like a loving father and show you why you think that. If your mind keeps going to war over the same thing over and over, it's because you're not delivered from it. I remember I, I used to, one time I was rebuking something, and a Pentecostal kicked it and everything. When I was praying, I kicked it, and the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 no. You don't, don't rebuke the enemy. I'm bringing it up by the Holy Spirit for you to deal with it. You just suppress it, deal with it, and get, get, get it out and, and get it off your mind so you can move forward. Okay, I know none of y'all do that, holy jokers. Um, but the, the word says, we demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through our arrogant attitudes that is raised up in defiance against the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought that comes against the anointed one and his plan for our life. Jesus, the truth, breaks wrong mindsets. The word of God breaks wrong mindset. The best Christian counselor in the world is not going to break wrong mindsets. They can give you good advice. Holy Spirit will break them, shatter them into a thousand pieces. Try to put that one back together. Listen, your mindset, here's the last thing I'm going to probably say. It's on the notes. Your mindset must be in line with the written word of God, number one, and the prophetic words over your life. Then when those two words are aligned with your God-given gifts, talents, and abilities, my friend, you will make a difference in this world like you could never, ever, ever to the ever believe. I'm talking, when they're aligned, your life will get better, your mind will get better, your marriage will get better, your income will get better. Everything about you, your grass might even grow in your front yard better. I don't know. But everything will be better when you align with the written word, the prophetic word. When you align those, because the prophetic word over your life is always going to be tied to your gifts, talents, and abilities. And now let me tell you. First time God told me to preach, I was sitting at First Baptist Church, and I looked at one of my friends, and I, I said, man, I think God called me to preach. And he's like, you know, Joe, man, like, you stutter, dude. You can't, you can't, you know. And the next guy, he would say, man, Joe, you, you have a hard time reading. And I, 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 the, everything in the world, I had so much to know, I couldn't know, I couldn't. And I hated public speak. Everything God was telling me was 100% opposite of what the natural world was. Okay. Until I said yes, it all dropped. I saw it got better. Everything, it, it just, it, I could read. Like I actually had a teacher tell me to slow down reading one time. And they were like, how in the world do you go from just looking at the paper like, like this to speed reading? The Lord. And uh, it's just, everything changed when I said yes. I take every thought captive that comes against my purpose. Now, you know. The thing is, 
You may think it's your life. You do what you want. That's whatever. But when you have kids and God gives you a prophetic word, you will be held accountable when you get to heaven one day. And uh, I don't know how it's going to be, but I'm thinking about pounds and high fives and Joe, boy, you went for it. I'm like, yeah. You know, I want it to be like a celebration. I don't want to get a roll out of my life. And they're like, um, you were like 17.9% accurate on what you, I said, oh man, no, I want to go for it. I want my life to count. And I remember when, I mean, just, I remember when God told me to write books, I mean, it, it was, it was a train wreck until Jeff and Michelle helped me. Then it became real easy. Um, it's just like when you can't do it, he's going to bring you the right people. When you can't do it, He's going to bring you the right book. He's going to bring you the right podcast. He's going to bring you the right people in your life. All you do is reposition your life this year. When warfare comes, embrace it. Don't be scared. I got you. Because I am hidden in him. And it's going to be good, okay? This will be, could be, can be, hopefully one of the best years of your life. I'm declaring it, all right? So we're going to pray, and remember the first thing that I kind of shared about Nate Johnson had, you know, it's a, you're, this is, you're not in a storm, it's a birth canal 